remember what God says. He loves a cheerful giver. A person that needs to be seen is not a cheerful giver. That is a giver that needs to be seen. That's all it is. A cheerful giver is someone that gives out of their hearts, that loves Jesus and his people so that they give. It's not about themselves. Good evening, body of Christ, and the body of Christ says, Amen. Amen. Are you enjoying the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes? I think this is the third, uh, yeah, third Bible study. We're in the Sermon of the, on the Mount. It will continue into Matthew 7. It seems like a long sermon, but it was not. Because Jesus, they understood, you know, every culture, our language and our speech changes. So, y'all, we have to delve a bit deeper to understand the fullness and the deepness of what Jesus said. But to them who have ears and could hear him, well, they did. Praise the Lord. But let us have those ears tonight. So let us pray. Mighty Father, our Father, you are good and you are gracious and you are kind to us, Lord, and this church has an excitement tonight. The new students are getting ready to go to, go to school, to study your word, to study you. And what a privilege and what an honor it is. Thank you, Lord, that you have so blessed this church with capable men and women, more than capable, willing to lay themselves down for you and your kingdom and your ministry, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let us not stop here, but let us take your word wherever we go. We cannot wait to see what you do next. You are the king of all kings, and we honor you, and we thank you, Father. Give them strength, Lord. Give them your authority. Give them your insight and your knowledge. Everything comes from heaven. Everything we need. Thank you, mighty Father. We honor you, and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are going into Matthew 6 today. Now, we saw the B attitudes. If you think about it, the world would have written them quite differently. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The world would say, blessed are the rich. Don't you think? All the opposites. And then Jesus comes and he says, if you think... I'm doing away with the law and the prophets, I am not. Actually, I'm telling you that sin is not an external thing. It sounds like if you look at the Ten Commandments, if you look like the, at the law of Moses, it seems like an external, something you do, something publicly, something someone can see. But no, Jesus said it's not that, it's inside. Sin starts inside. It starts with the way we think, the way we operate in our hearts. Things that grow in our hearts that's not supposed to be there. And then, of course, the Lord, <laughs> um, in, 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 uh, no, no, the chapter ended, verse 48, where Jesus says, Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. <laughs> Now, that seems like quite a stretch. But that word, therefore you shall be perfect, the Greek word is teleos, which means mature. You shall be mature in love. 
Where do we find those love rules? 1 Corinthians 13, you shall be mature. That is a mature love. You cannot fall into and out of love. You can't do that. If you follow, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It keeps no records of wrongs. If you keep that, that is a mature love. That is the way the Lord loves us. He makes it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous alike. He loves us all the same with a mature love. Now, if I say mature, what would you say is immature? Do you think an immature love can fall out of, of love? I think so. Every time someone says something or do something, and oh, I know that woman. When we were in school, she used to kick my chair. I don't like her. That's immature love. If a mature love will love the enemy the same as the friend. A mature love will love everyone the same, just like God does. Amen. Now, as we continue, we're going to see Jesus use the word hypocrite. Now, <clears throat> I had some questions during the week about the word hypocrite last, last week. Now, what is a hypocrite? It comes from the Greek word hypocrite or hypocrite, which means performer, stage actor. So, if you're watching a movie, who's a big actor now? I don't know. Yeah, well, we don't watch that much TV. If you watch an actor act the certain way, guns blazing, and, and it's not, that's not who the person is. He's just acting. It's not the true person. It's not a real cowboy. He's just, <laughs> just a cowboy in a movie. His acting is a stage actor. He's a hypocrite. That is what that word means. It's an actor, someone that is acting outside of his character. So if we got that down, then we can begin. Uh, chapter 6, Matthew 6, verse 1. Jesus continues and he says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Wouldn't that be nice? To be rewarded openly by a father that controls all gold and silver, that rewards openly, that knows about the secret things. But you know, uh, in this lifetime, I don't know if you have social media, it's horrible. The things out there is horrible. This church has um, a policy on things like this. We do not take pictures of the poor. We do not take food parcels and ask them to smile and put it on social media. It's a secret thing. It's not financially secret. The church 
Everything in the church is open to everyone. There's free directors. All know exactly what's happening. If you want to see the, the bank account of the church, we'll show you. No problem. We, can, we have nothing to hide. But when it comes to food parcels, it's a secret thing. Yeah, SARS want to know everything. Oh, my goodness. But we do not give them the names and the addresses and the stuff of the poor. That's horrible. You just don't do that. Imagine, you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking, and I'm not going to ask who was there ever in their lives, but there was a time when, and there are still times, especially in this time, where people are financially struggling. People that would not normally struggle are struggling now. Now imagine if you ask someone if you can maybe just borrow 200 rand to, to put some petrol in your car. And they say, okay, <laughs> here's the 200 rand. Smile. Let me just put this on social media. I gave you. Okay. Let everyone see. I'm so charitable. And everyone says, wow. Well done. Slow clap. You did a good job. Look at you. You received your reward on earth. You're not going to get anything from heaven. When the tithes come into the church, I don't know if you know this, I do not know who gives them. Do you know why I do not know? First of all, Marius and Villas is more than capable to handle those things. I do not want to know. The reason I do not want to know is I have seen churches fall because the pastor knows who gives the biggest tithe. And then he starts giving more attention. Listen, if you are rich or if you are poor, we are all under in one body, the body of Christ. There will be no you will not be treated special because you have an extra couple of bucks. You will not. It's not going to happen. Jesus did not react that way. We do not act that way if I'm poor or if I'm wealthy. Don't we all just serve him the same as the song says? So what does it matter? It just doesn't. And I really do believe pastors shouldn't know these things. We shouldn't. So then there's no partiality when it comes to the church. <laughs> I've seen churches fall because of this. Because now they want a special plaque against the wall and they want this and they want that. And they want to build this, but they, their name must be on this. And then they receive their rewards on earth. Don't you rather want an, a, a reward or in heaven or publicly on earth so your father can prepare a table for you before your enemies? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. I'll have that. I'll do it secretly. Whatever I do. That's why we've got such a dream. We were speaking about it in the meeting on Tuesday. <laughs> Our next church. We're praying about this. Please pray with us. Our next church, we would like a kitchen where we can prepare food and feed the poor there. Because we live in such a town where there's a lot of drugs and there's a lot of alcohol abuse, we have we had some reports that people would sell the food parcels for drugs and alcohol. So it will be better to feed people from the church. But I would like, and I'm asking the Lord boldly and in faith about this, I would like a separate area in our church where people can come and eat without everyone watching. Okay. The left hand not doing, knowing what the right hand is doing. Without, you know our children can be. Oh, that child, uh, he eats at church. You know, <laughs> we don't want that. 
It's in secret. It's supposed to be in secret. Praise the Lord. Only the volunteers that day will know who was there. And we're not going to talk because we're not Skinner Backies. We don't like gossiping. <laughs> anyway, and we've all been there. We've all been there. So let your Father reward you in secret. Verse 3. Oh, no, did I read that already? Yeah, your father will reward you openly. Remember what God says. He loves a cheerful giver. A person that needs to be seen is not a cheerful giver. That is a giver that needs to be seen. That's all it is. A cheerful giver is someone that gives out of their hearts, that loves Jesus and his people so that they give. It's not about themselves. Never. Okay, verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, the stage actors, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So what does your quiet time look like? Do you know what makes a strong public prayer? A person who has a strong private prayer life. Mm -hmm. The hours and hours, it happens. It happens when you're in your secret place. That you just get swept up in prayer. And then sometimes it can go an hour or two. That you can just sit there and speak to the Lord. We have a lot of respect for, for our people in our homes' quiet time. They would say, I am going into my quiet time. And that's it. That's all they have to say. We will not bother you in your personal time with the Lord. Does that mean we should never pray for other people in public? No, but it starts in your secret place. So what was he talking about? Why is, does he call them these stage actors? Oh, my goodness. I've seen it. I'm sure you have seen it. I used to belong to this little prayer group. And I would sit there thinking, wow, can these people pray? It's like they, they had a, a dictionary and a word of the day. Okay, and they would they would pray these big prayers, really beautiful words, descriptive words, and then you'll get to me. <laughs> Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. I do appreciate everything you give us every day, Lord. And uh, this is the issue. I'm just going to put it on the table for you. And this is what we're praying about today. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Amen. Because, well, I'm not an actor. And I thought these other ladies, wow. Where do they even, how? Okay, of course. You... Mm -hmm. I do struggle to keep attention if my eyes are closed. Okay. Let me just tell you a little secret. So what happens is this is this beautiful start of a prayer. And then my eyes are closed. So and then it goes on and on and on and on. And I'm thinking, what will we eat tonight? I wonder. Can't remember what's in the fridge. Should I stop at the shop? Oh, they're still praying. Mm. What will I wear tomorrow? Did I take the clothing out of the, the, the washer? Well, yeah, and there you go, I'm gone. I'm gone. And then I get home 
and I condemn myself. And I go to my secret place running in there and say, Father, I can't pray like those people. But Father, I can't even keep my attention on them when they're praying. There must be something wrong with me. I am weak. I Forgive me. Change me, Lord. I don't know what's going I can't. I, at the end of the day, that prayer group dismantled because they were actors. I didn't know that. I quickly found that out. They were gossipers. And as soon as the Holy Spirit started to move, they ended the prayer group. They didn't want him there. He wasn't welcome. It was just to be seen. But do we always know that when, when we just begin to run with the Lord? No, we don't. We don't know that until someone stabs you in the back, then you know. Then you know, you'll quickly, you'll learn. <laughs> you'll learn. What happened in that prayer group was horrible. I think the, the leader of that group had to phone me three times to apologize to me. Because she kept gossiping what I brought to the prayer table. Going as far as founding principles. At schools. I, that was not good. So no, you know what? Don't look at it that way. Keep it short and sweet. Get to it, man. My goodness, what do you want to ask the Lord? Ask him. He says, come to me, ask me. Imagine, you've got a personal relationship with Jesus, right? You do. Okay, I have a personal relationship with my husband. Okay. Imagine I would speak to him like this when he comes from work. Say, oh, my husband, how clean and clear is your glasses today? <laughs> I just love your wavy black hair. I do. Where did you get those shoes? Well, that's that's some nice liberty you have on. And he tries to say, "Hello, my wife." I said, "No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not done. I served you today. That you know." I served you. I did your washing today. There's a clean gown and there's a clean there's a clean towel for you. And there's going to be hot water. I took a bath early so you can take a bath. And I just served you today. Thank you that, uh, that I uh, am so privileged to serve you. And, and he says, but wife, I just, I just, and, and I didn't, I'm not, no, 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 I'm still, I'm still talking. And, um, Thank you for the food. You're such a good provider. Thank you, husband. Thank you that, that I have a house to clean. And, and he says, but wife, can I? No, 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 no. I mean. And then you go on with your life. Is that a relationship? No. Because before he could say anything, I stopped him. I mean, it's, it's like it is. That's the way it is. Bye-bye. It's over. And then I walk away and I go watch pornography. Or I go speak to other men. Or I go look for whatever there is to drink except coffee. Is that a relationship? No, 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 no. Imagine if that was your relationships. So I'm asking you, what does your peer life look like? Is the Lord trying to say something? And you just, I mean, no, no, it's done now. It was like, it was like a whole two minutes. Or do you answer yourself? Because this is, this is an interesting thing we've learned. Men like to do this. They answer themselves. Lord, I would like that sports car. Mm, mm, mm. That new BMW, Lord. I just, I just, oh. Lord, is it okay if I buy that car? And before the Lord can say, uh, you say, I feel I should. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. Mm. 
Did you pray about it? Yes. I prayed about it. The Lord was going to say, no, something's going to happen in a month or two, and you're going to be really bad, worse off if you take that car now. Give it another year. Give it another two years. But now you answered yourself because you really, really want it. And before he could say anything, you said, amen. No, I, uh, mm, no, no, I prayed about it. Now I'm done. That's not what relationship looks like. It's a getting to know each other. And that doesn't happen in public. That happens in private. That happens at his feet. That happens while I'm studying my word, asking him questions. So, but what did you mean? Lord, why would you say such a thing? I need to know. You know, I when... I was younger when I just started to study the word. There was no Google. Googling. Okay. I had to wait for answers. There was one specific um, thing in the Bible, in the, the Gospels. I had to wait four months before the Lord answered me. No quick fixes, no two-minute noodles. No microwave dinners. Wait. Wait on the Lord. He will answer. He is good. He will answer you when you are ready to accept the answer. Amen. But do we then pray to people in the streets? Yeah, we do. I prayed for a guy outside of, of Roman's Pizza <laughs> and he fell over. I did not see that coming. It was supposed to be a little private thing. It wasn't. It manifested and it Cajun caught him at least. Um, and the people at the chicken leg and drive-thru was going. <laughs> <laughs> because if the Lord asks you to do something, do it. Do it whether it is in private or public. Never tell the Lord no. It's too public. Never. No. Always. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father, immediately. But it has starts in your private place. Because how will you learn to listen to the Lord if there's no private relationship time? You won't be able to. You, you can't set your, your ears on the Holy Spirit without private time. Very important. Okay. I lost completely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to throw this in there. Um, you remember the Pharisee and the tax collector also? Do you remember that prayer? The Pharisee was, of course, public. <laughs> He's so clever. And he was praying while the tax collector was standing there. He was praying, Thank you, Lord, that I am not like other men. That I'm not like this tax collector. And what was the tax collector praying? He was breaking his heart in front of the Lord and saying, Lord, short and sweet, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. And the Lord answered the tax collector, not the one with the great big words that wanted to be seen by everyone. The one with the still small words who has nothing but heartache to bring to the Lord. Mm. I just love Jesus. Don't you? Mm. Amen. Verse 7. Mm. And when you pray, Nia, that's not verse 7. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's also verse 5. So, mm. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they will be heard for their many words therefore do not be like them for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him isn't that a comfort he knows exactly what you need you don't even have to ask he knows he is your father. He knows. 
But now he says, do not use vain repetition. Now, uh, this is going to hit home to every single South African out there. Come on. We grew up in the repetitions. What's that horrible English one? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, for children, all right? Um, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Okay, thank my My children didn't pray that. Okay, but what did you do at dinner? There was a verse. There was a little rhyme. That is how we were taught. So your dad or your granddad or whoever was at the table, it was usually the men. <coughs> Harry, can I ask you to bring me a glass of water, please? Thank you so much. Tani Aniki is not here tonight. Usually, Harry is already on his way. Thank you. Um, we would say this. I'm going to try to translate that little rhyme. It's just, Lord, bless this food and the hands that prepared it. Amen. Every night, same thing. Over and over and over again. You can just as well say, Violets, roses are red, violets, thank you. Roses are red, violets are blue. The chicken is dry and the rice is too. <laughs> it will have the same impact because it has no impact anymore. Repeating something over and over again has no impact anymore. It's just a rhyme. It doesn't mean anything. Your father who sees and knows secretly in your heart knows exactly what you are actually meaning. Most of us were checking out your brother or sister's plate. We say, mm, I'm going to wait till they look away. That's mine. That's mine. I'm going to put some extra veggies in there for them and just take the potato. And that's why. That's why. No. <laughs> but that's what it was like. That it, it had no, there was no meat on that bone. It was just, we were taught to pray every day, but there was no relationship. So it became a repetition. Who is Jesus talking about? Do you remember the Baal prophets? What did they do? They would yell out and scream at their demon for days. They will cut themselves, they'll spill their own blood, just so the demon would answer them. And they would say the same thing over and over and over again. That is not our God. He knows what you want, what you need before you say it. You do not have to keep repeating yourself. Can you imagine once again turning that relationship around? And I have to tell Marius, oh, I'm out of cream. I'm out of cream. Oh, I'm out of cream. I'm out of cream. I'm out of cream. Please, I'm out of cream. Do you see I'm out of cream? Didn't I tell you I was out of cream? I told you four days ago I'm out of cream. I'm not doing anything about it. I'm just, you know, telling him. He's going to get a bit irritated with me. Mm. All right. If you do have, how then do you teach your children to pray? That is the question now. I've taught my children, there was no rhymes, to speak to Jesus. That's it. Speak to Jesus. If they do not know how, say, okay, let's thank Jesus. Just for this day, you teach them a heart that is grateful from a very small age. Teach if they only have Jesus, thank you for mommy and daddy. That's okay. That's okay. Amen. That's fine. You know, most of us does not even say amen because it's an open conversation all day because we understand that our God is 
closer than our breath. So let them say, I've Gaijin once said, Thank you, Lord, for we had a duplex for the stairs so she could reach the toilet. That was a valid point. If there was no stairs, no, it could, it's a valid point. I heard my eldest once pray in the car on the way to school. She says, Lord, I wasn't even naughty this morning. Why are you making the sun shine in my eyes? <laughs> It's a valid point. She she wouldn't let me um, wash her hair because if both of her ears went under the water, Jesus would drown. If the water came into her ears, would get into her heart. That is how you build personal relationships. From a young age, you speak about Jesus, you teach them to use their own words, not a repetition. And I am making this point very clear before we go into the Lord's Prayer. And you will understand why. Okay. You see our time? No. I spoke too much today. <laughs> Running out of wanting to speak. <laughs> but let's speak about the word of the Lord. Verse 9. So Jesus says, In this manner, therefore pray. We're going to read through it. Short and sweet. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Short and sweet. Would you agree? But what did he just say before that? Do not make this a vain repetition. Don't do it. This is in this manner, pray. This is a um, example, a method of prayer. That is what he's saying. Not keep repeating the same thing every day. No. Where's the relationship in that? Doesn't he want to hear about you, about your heart? Does he know everything about you? Yeah, long before you ask anything. He does. Now he wants you to speak. So he gives us a simple formula. Nothing simple about the Lord's Prayer. We're going to break it down. First of all, what is this prayer for? Public and secret. Doesn't matter. This is what your method of prayer would look like. This is what it is like. When we were all baptized, we received the Holy Spirit. So this is the method the Holy Spirit will take you when you pray. It, he will. As I break it down, you're going to see, because what? The helper, the parakletos, the Holy Spirit, the one called alongside to help, he prays for us. Pray in the Spirit, Paul said. Sing in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, then sing in the understanding, pray in the understanding, which means First of all, your tongue, which only the Holy Spirit can give you, and then pray. But this is always the formula. I'm going to tell you this is just the way it is. First of all, he says, my father, our father. What does that mean? Why didn't he say, Oh God Almighty up in heaven, sovereign, holy. Because it's personal. 
Because prayer is personal. It is my father. It's personal. Not my daddy. It's my Abba. Yes. But he's my father. Jesus said, call no one father on earth. Never use that <coughs> word. On earth, you have your earthly daddy. Okay? And you have a father in heaven. <coughs> Not like any earthly daddy I've ever met. Completely different. Holy. Absolutely. In a league of his own. Does men strive to have that mature love as God? Of course they do. Of course we do. But we are talking about a father, so we are making it personal. Firstly, personal, my father, which means I know you. You know me. Lost in my notes again. Okay. Oh, completely overshot my notes. There we go. Now, how does this happen that you grow this person? Would you say that? Say, my father. S say that. Do you feel how personal it is? Can you feel that personal relationship? Now, that relationship will mature. It will mature. If you are just being baptized, like yesterday, the day before, a year, two years, it's going to be completely different than the 10-year or 20-year mark. A relationship grows as we get to know a person, right? That is how we grow. I don't have a relationship. I said, oh, yeah, I, I know that woman. It's like an acquaintance. You don't speak to your father like that. It is a relationship that grows in your secret place day after day, better and better. When you say father, there is no doubt who you are speaking to. No doubt. But we do not speak to him like we sometimes speak to our earthly daddies. Not at all. Although your, your earthly daddy would find it quite interesting if you do. Because <laughs> the next thing Jesus says is, Hallowed be your name, which means sanctified, holy. <laughs> There is no other name. Did he mention his name? No. He said, Father, hallowed be your name. Sanctified, holy, honored. He is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Then verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does he mean? Your kingdom come. Did God, um, our Father, promise us a kingdom? Yes. It's going to be lovely. But is his kingdom here now? Because he says on earth as it is in heaven. So can it be on earth as it is in heaven? Yes. Yes, it can. The day we received him by the blood of Jesus Christ, we received the Holy Spirit. And now, his kingdom has come for us. When the rest of the world is moaning and complaining, we can have joy. When the rest of the world is worrying, we have, uh, who can add a day to his life when he worries? So you are in control, Lord. Your will be done. Whatever your will is, Lord, that is fine with me because your will is perfect and that brings a peace. That means I cannot fight my circumstances. I cannot fight what's happening around me, but he can. Oh, he can. He can bring his kingdom into every situation. Only he can. So why should I worry and push and try to make things better for myself if he is in control. 
His kingdom reigns. And if his kingdom reigns you, it means you are his servant. Servant son, servant daughter, he will look after you because you are his. Because you call him my father. Easy as that. Yeah. Day free. <laughs> He is holy. His kingdom has entered us, verse 12. This is sometimes hard for people to understand. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, yeah, that could mean money. Today we speak about debt and debtors as, uh, you know, a financial thing, but that, that's not what the Lord means. That means whoever did you wrong, forgive them. We will forgive them as you forgive us. Because guess what, people? You are not without sin. None of us are. And he forgives us. He is merciful. He is faithful. Thank the Lord. Or probably none of us would have been here tonight. <laughs> Especially not me. He forgives us when we go remember the Beatitudes with a sorrowful heart to him and repent. He forgives us. So who are we to hold something against someone else? To be angry at someone else? Who are we? So we're the only ones that is allowed to be forgiven and no one else? I just told you the Lord is not a respecter of persons. He loves everyone the same. He forgives everyone the same. He is absolutely perfect in all he does. I will forgive those as he forgives me. Uh, I think I, I missed something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Hmm? Did I? That's horrible. How dare I? Verse 11, go on back. I knew I missed something. Thank you. And give us this day our daily bread. I want to tell you something about that verse. Maybe the Lord just wanted me to remind you to tell you something about that verse. Um, the Lord's word says that my daughters and my sons will prophesy, will dream dreams and prophesy. And uh, I was young in the Lord. It was even before I started to study or decided what I wanted to do. And I had this dream. I had a dream that it was pitch black outside. I've told you about this before, but I'm going to tell you again for those who are on you. And pitch black outside. Couldn't see your hand. If you pushed your hand out the door, you couldn't see your hand. But there was a light in the house, but there was no electricity. It was just me and my two children. And in the dream, I would walk to the fridge. There's light in the house, but it's the glory of God. It's not light from the ceiling or outside. And I would open the fridge door and there's nothing. And I said, Father, we have nothing to eat. If at all possible, can you just send a light in front of me to just get to... There was a spar or something next to us, a couple of a block away, to just get me there in this thick darkness so I can just get something to eat. And as I prayed, I would see his hand light up in front, huge, okay, not, not, um, light up and show me the way. He would take me step by step. And I would fetch food only for the day. And walk back. And after about the third time in the dream, I said, Lord, why don't you just light the way permanently? So I can just go whenever I need to go. Why do we do this daily? And he says, because I want you to ask me. I want to see to it that you are provided for every day 
all your needs. Ask me. What good is it to me if I make things too easy for you? You will stop speaking to me. You will think you do not need me anymore. And I woke up and I realized that we better realize we need him for our daily bread. Not thank you, Lord, for this month's bread. Amen. See you again in 30 days, Lord, when I'm going to thank you again, when I'm going to ask you again. No, every day. Thank him every day. It's an open prayer. Use it. Use it. Thank him for what he gives you. It's whatever. Do you have everything you needed today? Or is he busy maybe providing whatever you asked for? Yeah, because he knows what you need. He'll give it to you. Sorry. <laughs> forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. Our debts as we are. Sorry. Verse 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, did, did this prayer end as it began? Yeah, it ended in praise. Father, hallowed be your name. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm not going to go deep into the discussions that the theologians have about that last part of that verse. Not going to do it. But what do, does Jesus mean when he says, do not lead me into temptation? Do not lead us into temptation. Is that something he does? Okay. So I went outside and I walked around the block and I just happened to end up in a bar. No. We do really well to lead ourselves into temptation. Thank you. We do a good job. You know what? All of us has that little something that we shouldn't. Now, if you have a problem or had a problem with alcohol, stay out of the bar. Stay out. You have a problem. Don't walk into the bar and say, no, Lord, don't lead me into temptation. You led yourself there. Your feet did a good job. You're there now. Now lead yourself out. There you go. You don't have to say, do what they do. You don't have to. What are you doing there? If you know something tempts you, stay away from it. If you have a problem, addiction to your little telephone, put it down for 30 days. Discipline the flesh. Fast it. Get rid of it. Don't play into it and then, Lord, why did you lead me into temptation? What were you doing in the bar? No, Lord, amen. <laughs> I don't want to hear that, Lord. No, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Relationship, relationship. Yeah, I see the time. <laughs> Listen to just the next verse. So he says, amen. I don't... I don't always say amen, just so this church knows. Okay. You're going to get quite lost. Why don't I always say amen? Amen, but you can, it is so. That is so. That it, that's the way it is. Okay. Now, if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know he is with you 24-7, you do nothing without him. The day you were baptized, you are now with him. 24 7 he is the god who is omnipresent omnipotent omniscient he sees everything you do and knows everything you think why would i say amen i've got a whole day to pray oh lord did you see that don't understand that but mm -hmm. sure and lord Thank you for the sunshine, and Lord, thank you for the rain, and Lord, thank you, and thank you. And that's what we do. We live in an open prayer life. 
tonight you, I sometimes fall asleep without saying amen because that's how I fall asleep. I'm still talking to the Lord or singing him a song or doing something. But I know and that I know that I know that he said he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He will be at my side till the end of days. So he is with me. Amen. Yeah, that's a good time to say amen because that is the way it is. Do you close your prayers and then walk away and do something you shouldn't? Lead yourself into temptation? Oops. Listen to verse 14 to 15 and then we're going to end. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Whew. Is it sometimes hard to forgive people? <laughs> Absolutely. Look, things are kind of rough out there. I don't know if you've noticed. Things are quite rough out there. Forgive them immediately, swiftly, without an apology. That thing of, no, I need closure, that is a lie from the enemy. You will sometimes never get closure. Just forgive them. Move on. Yeah, but I don't feel like forgiving them. Uh, I did not see that verse where the Lord said, Feel like forgiving them and then do it. Look, the kingdom of God is not was not built and is not built on our emotions. Okay, if you feel it or don't feel it today, just do it. Just do it until you feel it. Doesn't matter. People do horrible things to other people. It doesn't matter. Just say immediately, Lord, I forgive them. Forgive them, Lord, as you forgave me all my trespasses. Forgive them as well, Lord. Thank you, Father. He'll deal with it. You do not have to. You do not have to hold on to the grudge. You do not have to tell everyone what they did. You do not have to. Just forgive them immediately and move along. And if you don't feel it, if it was a really big offense, Keep doing it. But now I'm going to throw uh, something that we read previously in there. But what then if your right eye mm -hmm, leads you to sin? What then if there's that one special person, and we all have them in our families, that one special person, <laughs> that, <laughs> that one special person that just keeps gunning for you? On a daily basis, five, six, seven times a day, it doesn't matter. Does things that they know is ungodly and will irritate you and lead you to sin? What then? What did Jesus say? If your right eye leads you to sin, pluck it out. Does that mean the Lord says, forgive them 70 times seven? Okay. You keep for the same sin, even if it's in one day. You have to keep forgiving them. But what if it gets hard, really hard? Because you've spoken to this, spoken to this person and said, what are you doing? Why do you continue this behavior if you know the Lord does not like it? If you know the Lord will not endure this kind of behavior. Why do you keep doing it? And there's anger. Sorry, but they just keep doing it. And now you start to sin. Now there's that seed of bitterness inside of you that grows and grows and grows. And they keep doing the same thing every day. There's no change. There's no repentance. They are not willing to change. They are not going to change. Listen, children of God, what is repentance again? 
It's change. It's change. What do we do? We forgive them and we step back. Step out. The Lord said, pluck that eye out before you end up in hell because of their sin, which you just keep enduring. You are no one's personal emotional punching bag. The Lord did not create you for that, for someone to keep punching you in the face. If they punch you once, yes, turn the other cheek. But get out of their way. They're not going to change. When will you realize? And if you have to tell them that, listen, I have to step back because I am sinning. Not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back because you're such a horrible person and I just <coughs> can't stand you. I have to step back because my God holds me to a higher standard than this. I'm going to step back. And they, they will probably tell you, no, I can't change. This is just who I am. If you don't like me, look around me. Because they do say things like that. But the fact is children of God do change. We change all the time. We grow in maturity. We grow in love with Jesus. We grow. If they can't follow you to the next step, I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave them behind. But forgive them before you do. You are responsible for your own soul. You cannot force anyone else into heaven. I would like to. I would like to try. I would like to dive people into the water of baptism and and help them along i would really i would but it's supposed to be a personal thing i can't do it i would like to do things like that but people just won't listen and even if they do get out of the water after you dived in after them um they're just gonna yell at you because you dive them under the, the water without their permission. They don't want Jesus. You have to start make that make just just wake up, people. Not everyone wants Jesus. They just want to call themselves Christians, but they are not. They are not little Christ who died and got back up. They 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 they're just not, and it's not gonna happen. They've made a decision. So back off. Back off. Let them be. Because your soul is important too. You are loved too. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> we thank you, Father, for your beautiful prayer, your beautiful model of prayer, Lord. And you truly are greatly to be praised in everything you do. Father, I ask that you heal everyone here, me included that felt inadequate when others prayed. And we were so short and sweet, Lord. But we thank you that you know us so deeply and so personally, that you know what we need before we ask. So, Lord, whatever any of us forgot to ask today, thank you that you are the provider. Thank you, Lord, that you will bless every single one in this room with a rich prayer life, a secret prayer life. Thank you that you are already waiting for them in their prayer rooms and that you are with them all day and every day. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Not without your blood, it could never have happened, Lord. We are so blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.